the makers of Old Nick. Old, old Nick? Oh, boy, Old Nick is a wonderful candy bar. And fit a honey. Fit a honey? It's a honey, honey, honey of a candy bar. Present David Harding, Counter Spy. <laughs> Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. Before we begin today's counter spy case, Sally, let's try another experiment in psychology with bit of honey candy bar. Like the one they reported in Life magazine a while back when yeah. we did mental telepathy for old Nick? Yes, except today, just for fun, let's try conditioned reaction. Jesse Crawford will help us. And uh, now, the in the bit of honey song, these four notes stand for the words bit of honey. Those notes are a musical symbol for the words bit of honey. In a few seconds, our listeners will find that little tune brings the same sense of delicious satisfaction that is now produced by the words bit of honey. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, is always fine, but especially in the summertime. You see, has a distinctive mild honey flavor sprinkled all through. Our crunchy crushed almonds, the separate wrapping of the six generous pieces in a candy bar makes it extra easy and convenient to eat in summertime. What's more, the unusual zesty flavor of candy bar is especially appropriate to warm weather. Right. For yourself, wherever fine candy is sold, ask for Candy Bar this evening if you can. You'll agree that, yes, Bit of Honey is a honey, honey, honey of a candy bar and only five cents. On last April 11th, Mary Linton, a dark-complexioned woman of 30 with intense, piercing eyes, stood in the center of the large Brooklyn garage, which she owned, watching several men work on some late-model automobiles. Cora Linton, her younger sister and a very pretty girl, watched the repair work for a moment and then turned to Mary. Mary? Mary? Hmm? Uh, sorry, Cora. You saying something? Yeah, I think I'm going to trot off to the movie. Stick around for a while, Cora. Oh, but Mary, I don't do Stick anything. Stick around! I'm expecting Jack Taylor soon. Mary, you know how I feel about Jack. And I know how Jack feels about you. Stay put. Say hello to him. I hate him. He's a good... He's all right. If you'll stick with me, he's going to have a good future. Besides, he's crazy about you. Please, Mary, I do. That must be Jack now. All right. Open her up, Tony. Mary. Hello, Jack. Cora. Wow, you waiting for me, beautiful? No, I was just... She go- stayed to say hello to you, Jack. Well, oh, Mary, what do you think of this car? It's a real beaut, ain't she? Buick 1942 Deluxe. Uh-huh. Good enough. Cora, didn't I tell you Jack is a smart boy? Yeah. You can't be a dodo and pick up cars like this, Cora. You know, Mary, the sucker didn't even leave his keys in the ignition. I had to switch wires to start it. And it only took me 50 seconds flat. For that 50 seconds work, you're going to get 250 bucks. 250 bucks? Hey, this car's worth 1800 If you had a bill of sale for a check. But now i got to have the serial numbers changed, switch parts, ship the car out of the country. Two fifty's a good price for a hot car. That's not that much. I'll take it on one condition. What's that? Cora helps me spend it. No, I... Sure she will, Jack. Come on inside the office. I'll give you the money. Got your rye, Cora. I don't want anything to drink, Mary. Get yourself. 
I wish you'd listen when I want to say something. I know what you're going to say. You don't like the racket we're in. Yes. Being nice to those crooks, how can you do this to me, Mary? Look, my darling sister, in my own funny way, I love you. Sure. I want you to be nice to Jack Taylor because the sap brings me $1,800 cars for 250 But if Jack or anybody gets fresh with you, I'll put a bullet in him myself. But it's not only Jack. I'm scared of the cops and the counter spies. If we're caught, I... I'll I... see that you slip out. Meanwhile, the racket is paying for this swell apartment... All our clothes, anything we want. Honest, Mary, I'd rather go to work. Doing what? You can't even type. Forget it. Let me do the work. I'll take that. Yep. Miss Linton? Which one? Mary Linton. Speaking? I'm Miss Linton. My name is Sam French. I'm from Chicago. So? A mutual friend of ours told me to look you up. Who is he? Alf Burton. Yeah? Alf Burton's a very good friend of mine. Alf and I are bodies. Can I come over to see you? Why not? We'll be home. You've got the address, I suppose? Right. Bye. Bye. Who is that, Mary? A man named Sam French from Chicago. He says Alf Burton sent him. Who? Al Burton, Chicago, you don't know him. Anybody he sends over should be all right, I guess. Not sure, hmm? Nothing like making sure, Cora. We're going to check before we get chummy. Is Mary Linton? No, I'm Cora Linton, her sister. Oh. Uh, Mary's inside. Won't you come in? Thank you. Look, your sister's as beautiful as you. Don't move, Mr. French. I don't understand. What's your gun for? I'll tell you in a minute. Cora, see if Mr. French has a gun. All right. Yes, he has one. Take it. I have it. Now step away from Mr. French. Now, Mr. French, you may walk into the living room. I still don't understand. I'm a friend of Alf Burton's. That's what you say, Mr. French. I want to hear it myself from Alf Burton. <laughs> you. Did you send up a friend to see me? Sure did, Mary. Smart boy named Sam French. Well, there's a guy here now who claims he's Sam French. What does he look like? About five feet nine or ten. Blue eyes. Straight, short nose. So far, so good? A uh, nice looking boy with them blue eyes and blonde hair. Hold it. What'd you say about his hair? Wait, I forgot I to tell you. It's Don't blonde. move. I that again and I'll blast you. Al, what'd you say was the color of Sam French's hair? Blonde. Color of straw. Can't miss it. Man here is dark-haired, black. Hold it. Now, wait a minute. Just give me a chance to talk, will you? Talk fast, Mr. My hair's dyed. I had to fool the police. I didn't want them to know I was going to New York. Examine my hair. You'll see it's dyed. Oh, Mary, maybe he's telling the truth. He's got blue Don't eyes. Don't move. Hello, Al. I'm not sure of this man. Anything more definite I can identify? Uh, yeah. Come to think of it, there is. Sam French has a little strawberry mark in his left arm. Try to get it off once. There's an acid mark around. Wait a minute, I'll see. You. Roll up your left sleeve. That's right, my birthmark. I'm going to hold it off. Cora, oh, don't get in front of him. Just see what he's got on his left arm. Oh. There's a small red marker. Birthmark. There's a scar around it. Well, your hair could be dyed. Uh, thanks, Al. Drop in when you're in New York. Guess you're all right, Sam. Whew. I've 
Wouldn't want to go through that again. Sorry. I had to be sure. You're a smart dame, Mary. Like Alf said. Just the kind of dame I want to hook up with. We can talk about that at dinner. I know a nice place where we can talk. We owe you a treat for that scare. Anything else you'd like, Sam? Cora? Nothing, Mary. Not a thing, Mary. Now, can I get down to business? Sure. What's on your mind? I'm looking for a New York contact, Mary. Like you. I can pick up cars in Chicago and points west and ship them to New York. What makes you think I'm interested? Well, Burton tells me you've got some swell outlets. Mexico, South America. I managed to get rid of my cars. You could make plenty getting rid of my cars. Sure. But there's something else. What? The Cicero mob. So? Who's running the Cicero mob now? Nobody knows. Oh, well, whoever he is, he's a smart operator. The Cicero mob is my main competition. We run into each other. That's what's worrying you? They're tough. What do you think's going to happen to you, Sam, if you steal cars in their territory and ship them to me? I'll take my chances. I got a few boys of my own who are plenty tough. We'll handle the Cicero mob if we have to. All right. It'll be your funeral. And you'll take my shipments? As many as you can deliver. Good. You'll get my first shipment when I get back to Chicago. When'll that be? That depends on Cora. Me? I don't understand. I'd uh, like to spend a few days in New York. That is... If you will show me around, Cora. Oh, really, Sam? Sure, I... Cora will step out with you, Sam. You'll be glad to, won't you, Cora? I didn't know you could drive this well, Cora. Well, this car drives itself. Where'd you get it, Mr. French? <laughs> I bought it. I wouldn't drive a stolen car. Certainly a bit of honey of a car. Turn into that dirt road ahead. Why? It's a shortcut. Now stop. I will not. No? Then I will. I'll take the key. Sam, please. Better relax, Cora. I won't hurt you. Sam, please give me that key. Uh Uh-uh. When I tell Mary, she's not going to like you, Sam. But you're not going to tell her. Sam, she'll kill you, I swear. I can take care of myself. What's more, I'm going to take care of you. Sam, you wouldn't. That's not what you think. I'm just going to, I'll sort of hold you in protective custody. Protective? What for? I just want your sister to come to terms. But, but I, I, I thought you had me this evening at the restaurant. That's what I wanted Mary to think, Cora. She doesn't know that I'm the leader of the Cicero mob. Why, you... I don't want to have to hurt you, Cora. This is a private fight between Mary and me. I'm taking over the New York territory, and I'm going to... I just didn't like his face. I didn't like you traveling around with him, so I followed you. So Mary spoke. She made me go out with Miss Mary. What's that about Mary? Mary spoke. Mary made me be nice to Sam. Made me nice to all the men I didn't want to. She did, huh? Cora, here, you take my gun. Go on, take it. Put it in your pocketbook so if any other guy tries to pull a fast. Thanks, Jeff. That would take me home. Sure. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-huh. I got a better idea. Put the gun in your bag. But you said... 
Go on. Drop it on the floor of the car near this punk. Oh, all right. Now, come on. We'll get out of here before somebody sees us. And we're going to have a talk with Mary. <laughs> What happened? How did you know something happened? My radio. Keep it tuned to the police call. <laughs> Carl, what happened? The police announcer says Sam French is dead. He is. I shot him. Start talking, Jack. Your little playmate from Chicago was going to play kidnap with Cora until you came to terms. Terms? We came to an agreement earlier this evening. Oh, yeah? Sam was leader of the Cicero mob. He came here to get you out of the way. Dirty. Jack, I, I certainly owe you something for saving Cora. Forget it. The cops think a dame drove Sam's car. Cora must have left a couple of hairpins or something. That's all? Yeah, well, nothing to worry about. The car was <laughs> Sam's. I'll never trace it up. That's so funny. <laughs> Mary, the murder gun is in the car. Right alongside of Sam French. I don't get it. The cops will, Mary. Cora's fingerprints are all over that gun. What? Are you crazy? You shot Sam. Sure, sure. But I wiped off my prints and handed the gun to Cora. Her fingerprints are all over it. What? Cora ran out. The police will think only one thing. Cora killed Sam and ran away. <laughs> you did that to Cora? You did that to my kid sister, you slimy rat! Dirty double Stop! Wait a minute! Stay away from that drawer! Jerry's got a gun! That's better. Come on over here and sit down, Mary. Why'd you do it? Why'd you pin the kill on Cora? Because you played me for a sucker, Mary. That's why. With Cora for bait. You got me wrong, Jack. Oh, no. You got me wrong. You didn't figure me for a guy who his head, did you? Well, baby, it's little Jack Taylor who does all the talking from now on in. All right, Jack. What have you got in mind? Cora here has no police record. The cops will never know whose fingerprints are on that murder gun unless I tell them. And I will tell them, too, unless... Unless what? Unless you and me become partners, baby. Well, that's the way it is. Yeah. Fifty-fifty on the whole setup. Nothing small about you, is there, Jack? Not a thing. But Sam French dead will take over his Cicero mob. Well, what do you say? You know I wouldn't turn Cora over to the police. Okay, then we're partners. Now, how did you come to hook up with Sam French? Friend of mine. Alf Burton in Chicago. Alf Burton, huh? Okay, that's my first stop. Alf Burton in Chicago. Counter Spy will continue in just a moment. But right now, I can see that Jimmy wants to wheedle an old Nick candy bar or a nickel out of me. Today, Jimmy, you won't do it. I'm determined. You're absolutely right, Mr. Krupp. Uh, I want to apologize for the way I've been putting you on the spot. I've flattered you, asked you riddles, and teased you in order to get old Nick candy bars. It's not fair, is it? Oh, Jimmy, I don't really mind. No, sir, I haven't been fair. For instance, you have an old Nick candy bar in your pocket today, haven't you? Well, certainly, I always have an old Nick candy bar handy. It's as fine a candy bar as I know with that thick milk chocolate coating. Creamy, buttery, smooth caramel. And the fudge and... Oh, fresh toasted nuts. It sure is good eating. Well, today, if I pointed how much money you make, a big-time radio announcer... Scale. That is. And how you got plenty of old Nick candy bars and uh, how utterly delicious old Nick candy bars are and how I'm broke and don't have any and I'm so hungry for an old Nick. Well, if I did that, it'd make you sound like the worst kind of a heel if you didn't give me one. Wouldn't it? Okay, Jimmy, here you are. Now tell him what you think of old Nick, you rascal. Old Nick? <laughs> oh, boy! Old 
Nick is a wonderful candy bar. <laughs> Get some soon, folks. Wherever fine candy is sold. You'll like old Nick. <laughs> now back to our counter spy case. <laughs> I'll take this report into Mr. Harding myself. Busy, Chief? Oh, hello, Peter. They're studying this map layout of stolen cars in the United States. Maybe this teletype report will fit in, Chief. Sam French, a hot car artist from Chicago, was just killed in New York. Uh-oh. This may be the beginning. Of what? This report of stolen cars shows that the heaviest concentrations around New York and Chicago. Sam French, a Chicago mobster, being killed in New York means only one thing. The New York and Chicago gangs are beginning to cross each other. Exactly. Peters, there's enough incentive in stolen cars for gangsters to start a bloody massacre that may rival Prohibition days. We've got to stop it, Peters, before it gets started. Hello, Mr. Burton. Call me Al. A friend of Mary Linton is a friend of mine, Jack. Ah, oh, glad to hear it. Besides, it's a piece of quick change for help Mary. In what way? Information. What do you want to know? Sam French died. Okay. Who's running the Cicero mob now? It ain't settled yet. Several of the boys have ideas. Well, they better forget those ideas. The Cicero mob is going to be run from New York. These boys are tough and hungry. They ain't giving up nothing. Well, listen to reason, huh? Each one of them boys figures he'll be the big boss. I can't waste any time. Don't see how you can rush matters. Like I said, they have their own ideas. They have their own ideas, huh? Alf. What are the names of the boys with the ideas? Gang war is flaring up in Chicago, Mr. Harding. What's the report? Two more gangsters killed in Chicago. Both men were connected with Sam French at one time. Sam French again. Peters, have they turned up on anything on the Sam French killing? Nothing new, Chief. There's a clear set of fingerprints on the gun, but the local police haven't yet identified the prints. Peters, why are our New York field office? And? Have them step into the Sam French case. Requisition the murder weapon and have it sent to Washington. Also have our New York office put the murder car through the laboratory. Will do, Chief. Well, I guess I kind of got this little blowout coming to me, huh, Mary? Working fast, Jack. But those men who were killed in Chicago. Ah, uh, listen to the baby. There'll be plenty more killed before I'm finished, Cole. I'm organizing Chicago if I have to knock off every last mobster in that town. Jack, I've been in the racket longer than you. So? I never had to do any killing. Murder's a sure way to get the cops down on you. Ah, you're all right for that local stuff, Mary, but this is big time. I'm going to combine all the hot car setups in the entire country. And I'm going to do it fast and sure. By killing? By knocking off the opposition before it gets started. Mary, I can't stand it any Don't longer. Take it easy, Carl. Well, this killing. Stealing cars is bad enough, but murder and more murder. Are you getting any ideas, Cora? Yes. I'm getting out. I'll leave town, go to work somewhere. Oh, no, you won't. You can't stop me. I'll run away. Cora, the cops have got a set of fingerprints on a murder gun, remember? I just suppose they find out whose prints they are. Now, stop it, both of you. Cora isn't going anywhere. Oh. Cora better not get any ideas. Now, stop crying, Cora. Go potty your nose or something. Mary, I don't like the way Cora acts. It's all this talk about killing. She'll get over it. Cora may be your sister, but... What do you mean? Sister or no sister, she's getting dangerous. I don't like what you're driving You'd at. better. Mary, there might be a time when it'll be either Cora or you. Shut up. Cora's no danger. I'll control her. You better. I 
you in the laboratory, Peters. We've just completed an analysis of the gun used in the Sam French murder, Chief. Good. We've confirmed at least one police deduction. A woman handled the gun after the fatal bullet was fired. We found some particles of face powder in the barrel of the gun. The girl apparently had put the gun in her bag, then took the gun out and dropped it near French's body. It was a type of powder. High grade, but sold commonly in department stores of the better kind. A deep shade. The girl evidently is a dark brunette. This is confirmed by a smear of lipstick on the gun. The lipstick is dark, almost purple, the kind used by girls with black hair. Well, that's a big help, Peters. We've got to find that girl. She's the key to this particular car-stealing racket. Chief, there are only 140 million persons in the United States. Half are men, remember. That still leaves 70 million. Hardly. The murder took place in New York. We can reasonably infer that the girl's a New York resident. New York City, most probably. I'll go along with you on that, Chief, but it still leaves about 7 million persons. Three and a half million women. Not if you stop to think a minute, Peters. Most women have hair of varying shades of brown. Blondes and extreme brunettes are in the minority. That's right. And here's something else. This girl was driving Sam French's car. It's reasonable to assume that she had a driver's license. That's exactly, Peters. That narrows it to a girl with black hair, eyes probably deep brown or black, who has a driver's license and is on file with the Motor Vehicle Bureau in New York. At best, Chief, there'll still be several hundred girls in New York answering to that description. That's true enough. Now, have we received an analysis of the murder car? Not yet, but it may come through at any time. Well, a chemical analysis of the dust on the floor of the car, dust from the shoes of the driver, will isolate still further the neighborhood where this girl lives. It's logical. Peters, order a plane for New York. I've got an idea we may be able to locate the girl who was with Sam French. With this tailwind, we'll be in New York in about an hour, Chief. That's fine. If we're reasoning correctly. This case ought to break tomorrow. That's New York calling, Chief. Harding to New York. Go ahead. Eight, New York to Harding. Plan 14 put into operation. All preliminaries covered. Awaiting reaction of subject involved. Very good, J6. Should arrive in New York within the hour. I'll meet you at field headquarters. Next. Come on, move up, please, lady. I got this notice to bring my license to the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Uh, you're in the right place, lady. You got your right license? Yes, but I don't understand why I... You don't... and all the rest of the people online, all we want is your license. You'll be given new ones. Oh, here it is. Uh, anything wrong with it? Not a thing. We're starting to issue a new form, that's all. Let's see, uh, Cora Linton, address, good enough. Sit down, your name will be called and the new blanks filled out. No additional fee. Cora. Jack was asking about you. Yeah, and it ain't love, baby. I'd just like to see you close to home. Oh, can't I leave the house for five minutes? You've been gone all afternoon. I had to go down to the motor vehicle bureau, that's all. Make me a drink, will you, sir? Sure. Motor vehicle bureau? What's the matter? Your license expired? No, they wanted me to come there, and that's that. Here's your drink, Cora. That motor vehicle story smells fishy. I got the notice. I can prove it here. Take a look at this, Mr. Smart Money. Yeah. So you had to bring your license to the motor vehicle bureau, huh? They just took my license and gave me a new one. Me and thousands of other girls. Yeah? No men? I didn't notice. Come to think of it, no, only girls. Oh, forget about it. Women's Day at the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Have a drink, Jim. No. Let's talk about it some more, Cora. What kind of women were they? I don't know. Girls, young women. Only young women, huh? Lots of brunettes. I don't... What do you mean? What's fighting you, Jack? Look, suppose the cops figured out it was a black-haired young dame who drove Sam French's car. Somebody might have seen her and Sam. Well, they couldn't have. We didn't stop anywhere. Oh, you must have stopped for a red light. Somebody saw you. 
So the cops play it smart. They look up all the driver's license. They call in all the black-haired dames on some phony excuse. Oh, you're crazy. There was a room full of people. You hand in your old license. It's got your fingerprints all Jack, over it. don't go getting any ideas. I had one all along. Jack, don't shoot. Let go my arm. I so help me. I'll let you have it first. You can't do it. You can't kill me. Oh, you oh, oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Right, Chief. Drop it, I tell you. Oh, drop it. Oh, oh, oh. Lucky for you, Miss. The superintendent was around and oh, let us in. I'm so glad you're here, even if you are the police. United States counter spy. Well, I tell you, I know Cord fixes, but she ain't getting away with it. That's a girl who killed Sam French. Her fingerprints are on a murder case. He's cut. lying. Please, listen to me. He's lying. Or it's innocent. She was with Sam French, but Jack killed him. Shut up, you fool. You're getting your own neck Quiet and let the lady talk. I'll talk. I'll talk plenty. I imagine you will, Miss Linton, but at best it'll just confirm the evidence we have concerning your car stealing setup. All right, Peters, take them to headquarters. David Harding will be back in just a moment to tell you about next week's exciting case. Say, I sure want to hear about that. I heard it was sensational. But uh, don't you want to hear about old Nick Candy Bars first, Jimmy? Now, look, Mr. Krupp. Roger. What can you tell me about old Nick candy bars? I enjoy one every day. That's all I need to know. But uh, what about those folks who've never had the pleasure of tasting old Nick? Never tasted old Nick candy bar? Is it possible? That's right. Even though old Nick has been a favorite of millions for over a quarter century, there are still some folks who've never enjoyed that smooth, thick chocolate coating. The crunchy peanuts and buttery rich caramel? And the creamy fudge. Four famous candies blended into one delicious bar. Well, what do you know? Well, what'll we do? Tell them. Tell them? Old Nick? Oh, boy. Old Nick is a wonderful <laughs> candy bar. As Jimmy points out, you've missed a rare treat if you've missed Old Nick. Get some Old Nick candy bar soon. Why not this evening? You'll like Old Nick. This is David Harding speaking. For months, Private First Class Fred Parker, stationed with the American occupation troops in Europe, had looked forward to his wife and family joining him. But a certain man in this country had other ideas, ideas which included gambling, murder, and double cross. How these different elements, thousands of miles apart, suddenly came into focus makes next week's Counter Spy broadcast an exciting, timely expose. I invite you to listen. Sunday, August 4th, same time, same station. <laughs> David Hardy, Counter Spy, is a Phillips H. Lord production. 3345. 3345. <laughs>